why would we consider single species microbial inoculants beneficial? Or broadening that from a single species, sometimes you might have microbial inoculants that have two or three dozen species. When we know that we have a soil microbiome that has tens of thousands of species that are currently identified with conceivably millions that we haven't even identified yet. And there's this recurring question, how do we consider that it's possible to add a microbial inoculant that only has a handful of species and expect them to establish a viable population and expect them to make a difference? And there's this, there is this concept in, in um, biological systems and in ecosystems of what are termed keystone species. And, and I think of them in the microbiome context as being pioneering species where you have a couple of species that when they are present, they change the behavior of everything else that's present in that ecosystem. And so from a soil microbiome perspective, some of my friends have been telling me they've been having a lot of concept, a lot of fun with this concept. I mentioned it once in a podcast just in passing. I talked about the idea of having a pool party. If you want to have an awesome pool party with 200 people showing up, and by the way, I've never thrown a pool party, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you want to have an awesome pool party with 200 people, it's not a question of needing to invite 200 people. The question is, who are the 10 people that you need to invite so that the other 200 people show up? Who are, who are the cool kids that everyone wants to hang out with and that uh, are attractive and the remaining, remaining 200 show up? And I think similarly about these keystone species where you can have a small group, you can have five or 10 species or groups of species that um, create an environment where everyone else wants to show up. So mycorrhizal fungi is one example of what can be a single species inoculant that completely changes the ecosystem. We know the same is true of trichoderma. And the reality is, I'm puzzled by this objection to using inoculants that only have a few species because the reality is we've been using rhizobium bacteria inoculants for decades where we are inoculating a single species of a microbe onto legumes so that they colonize the legume root system, produce nodules, and effectively fix nitrogen. And let's just expand that concept to be a bit broader, to not just be rhizobium, but also to include mycorrhizal fungi, to include bacillus subtilis, to include, include this a, a larger group of these pioneering keystone type microbial species that change the environment. So now this comes us to the second question, leads us to the second question is how do we expect to add one microbe into this mix, into the pool, and expect that microbe to establish a viable population and shift the rest of the microbiome? From what I've been able to observe, um, the, the greatest success is, uh, occurs when we introduce a microbial inoculant similar to the rhizobium uh, in proximity to a living root system. So we can't, when we just go out there and spray them on dead bare soil, let's say in, in an almond orchard or something like that where we have no living root systems, they're going to struggle to survive. But if we apply them when there are living roots present and those roots begin releasing root exudates and photosynthates and feeding those microbial inoculants that we've added, then they have a serious shot at establishing a viable population and completely changing that microbiome architecture and the, the group of microorganisms that are there and the collaborative relationship they have. And this is the foundation that is required in order to have the rhizophagy cycle working and to deliver abundant nitrogen from our soil. We should think about inoculating our corn crops and all of our crops, not just legumes, but all of our crops should be inoculated with microbes that colonize the microbiome, that fix nitrogen, that deliver nitrogen to the crop. This is, and not just nitrogen, but other elements as well. This is how you deliver nutrients in a biological system. And this is the reason for being, this is the foundation of why we use our microbial inoculants like BioCode Gold uh, as seed treatments so that we have them there present by the seed, just like a rhizobium inoculant, to deliver nutrition to the crop in the, in the first growing season. There's rhizobium fixes nitrogen immediately. We have the expectation that we'll have successful colonization and nitrogen fixation within 30 to 45 days after planting. The same should be true of any other seed treatment microbial inoculant like BioCode Gold. We should expect it to colonize and begin delivering results right away.